In this lesson, I'm going to talk to you about the quadratic formula and the discriminant. But before we get into that, I need to have another little discussion with you about the difference between quadratic functions, quadratic equations, and what they actually give you for a solution. So this is quite a long lot of words to read, so I will put a link to a handout for you though, so you can just print it out. Okay, so let's talk first quadratic functions. A rule that provides a single output number for every input number. So I'm not a big fan of input output, but it makes sense if I give you an equation like this and you plug in some value for x where a, b, and c are constants and you will get an answer, right? And that's why you can make a graph from it that looks like a parabola. So you have two variables, x and y, and the graph is a parabola. Okay, on the other side here though, if we have an, a quadratic equation, so that's a statement that two expressions are equal. So we have, this is the statement on this side is equal to some number. Um, it could be zero, it could be another number that you have to bring over and make set, set equal to zero. And we did some of those in the last little exercise when we were factoring. So there's only one variable in these equations, in this case it's just an x, and the graph consists of points on a number line. These numbers are called its roots. The graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. The x-intercepts of the graph are called the zeros of the function. So when we factor this function or this quadratic equation, we get the same thing, but they're giving us different solutions. So for this one, this is telling us that the zeros are 1 and 4, or the x-intercepts are 1 and 4. So those two can be used interchangeably, zeros or x-intercepts of a function. Quadratic equations, on the other hand, have roots. So the roots here are 1 and 4. So you can see with the diagrams that I've done for you here that this is this would be your solution for roots and this would be your solution for x-intercepts or zeros of a function. So the zeros of a function are very important. You're often trying to find them for a bunch of different reasons in word problems and so on. And of course, right in between those two zeros, we have the axis of symmetry. So if I find the midpoint between 1 and 4, I would get 2 and a half. So this is x equals 2.5. That's the equation of a line for an axis of symmetry. And then if I plug 2.5 back into the um, equation here, that would be my input number of 2.5 and I could find the y value, which is going to be something down here. So that would be my vertex down here on the axis of symmetry. Okay, so what happens, so if you can't factor, if you can't factor this function, how are you going to find, or this equation, how are you going to find the roots or the zeros for the function or the roots for the equation? So let's take a look at some functions that we're going to find the roots for. So here's my first example. I have y equals x squared plus 2x minus 9. And if I asked you to factor this, you'd say, well, what multiplies to negative 9 and adds to positive 2? And your answer would be, I haven't a clue because it doesn't work nicely. It's not, it's not one of those nicely factored equations. So what you would want to do is understand that this comes from this equation, right? ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the standard form of a quadratic. So once you have it in this format, in other words, you have to have y equals something, then you can state what a, b, and c are. So in this case, a would be equal to 1, because there's 1x squared, your b is 2, and your c is minus 9. Okay, so now you're going to use the quadratic formula. 
Now, you should, that's a hard thing to say, you shouldn't, you, you don't need to know how to derive the formula, the quadratic formula, but it's a good exercise for you to look at how the formula was derived. And you will find that in any textbook or on online, you can find, I'm not going to go through it myself because it's something that um, takes a lot of time and some of you will just get lost. It's better if you can just take your time and go through it step by step in a textbook. So you need to know this formula. So x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing, make sure you put a big long line here, is over 2a. So if I want to find the zeros for this function, or the x-intercepts, because it is a function we're talking about here, not an equation, all I have to do is plug in a, b, and c into this equation and solve for x. Now you can see with the plus or minus, this is going to give me the two roots of a function of an equation or the two zeros for the function. So let's plug in what we have here. So negative b, so 2, so it's got to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c. Good idea to put them in brackets and be really careful because it's minus something and I want to make sure that you don't make a mistake with your negative signs. So that's going to be negative 2 plus or minus the square root of, so 2 squared is 4, and minus 4 times minus 9 is 36, positive 36, so 4 plus 36 is 40, all over 2. Okay, so now you would probably get out your calculator and find out that that would give us the two solutions being x is approximately equal to 2.16 and x is approximately equal to minus 4.16. Okay, so that's how you use a quadratic formula. Okay, it's just another way of being able to find the zeros of the function, the x-intercepts of the function, or the roots of an equation. Okay, so let's take a closer look at this because with this equation there is a very special part to it and the part that I'm referring to is this part here that happens to be underneath a radical sign. So if the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so let's write if the square root of b squared minus 4ac was equal to 0, then you would only have one solution, right? Because this would this part here would all be gone. So it would be minus b plus or minus 0 over 2a. Then you end up with minus b over 2a. So x equals minus b over 2a. What happens if b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0? So if it's greater than 0, I would get two solutions, right? I would have two solutions, two solutions. So this one is going to give me one solution. So it could be one root or one zero and if b squared minus 4ac was less than zero i think you're pretty smart you'd probably say well i cannot take the square root of a negative number so this means there is no solution okay so using this part underneath the radical sign <clears throat> it's called the discriminant so the discriminant is a quick way of testing whether or not you have, no, let me spell it right this time. I got all set and then decided I would put it at the title and I spelt it incorrectly because my mind was elsewhere on this Mother's Day. So discriminant, the discriminant. And the discriminant tells you how many solutions. 
so it's a shortcut. You can check the discriminant to see how many solutions you will have and sometimes a question might just say how many solutions are you going to have? It tells you how many solutions. Okay, and the discriminant is capital D and it's B squared minus 4AC. So you don't put the radical in when you call it the discriminant. The discriminant is just this little piece here. Okay, so don't, don't go writing out a bunch of, bunch of things. So it's just B squared minus 4AC. Don't put the radical sign in it. Yes, that's where it came from. It came from under here and that gave the whole reasoning why we can use a discriminant, but you just use B squared minus 4AC. Okay, so let's do another example. So we're going to write up this question here. It's going to be y is equal to 2x squared minus 12x plus 18. Okay, so I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So really good idea, write it out. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, the whole thing over 2a. Don't forget the whole thing part. So my a is 2, my b is minus 12, and my c is 18. So now I'm going to plug all those values in here. Now watch negative b and it's negative 12. So that's minus minus 12. Okay, that's going to be plus 12, obviously plus or minus the square root of b squared and make sure you put b in brackets here because as you know minus 12 squared is not equal to minus 12 squared right there's those are two different solutions this one the answer is negative this one your answer is positive so b squared minus 4 times a times c i'm going to extend my radical sign here all over 2 times 2. Okay, so if you do that, you're going to get, this is 12 times 12 is 144, and this is 8 times 18, which is also 144. So I'm going to get 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus 144 all over 4. And this obviously is going to be 0 and I get x equals 3. That is one solution, right? One solution. So if I were to sketch this function, it would mean that, let's just do a quick sketch here. At 1, 2, 3, it has one x-intercept. The function itself is concave up. I know that because the a value is 2. And I also know that if I go over 1, I'm going to go up 2. So I can make a quick sketch. If I went over one more, okay, we'll just sketch it like this. Okay, so it's going to go like this and like that. So this is what it means when it has one solution. One solution means it just touches the x-axis at one point. Always a good idea to label your axes to make it prettier. Okay, so let's, uh, oh, I have no more paper. I'm gonna flip it over. It's okay, it's not too bad on this side. Okay, so we're going to do one more example, and this time it's going to be a quadratic equation plus 12x minus 7 equals zero. Okay, so let's go to town on that quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. My a is equal to minus 3. My b is equal to 12. And my c equals minus 7. So before you use a quadratic formula, you should always check to see if it's factorable. 
So I would say a product of 21 and a sum of 12. Mm, no, 21 is 3 and 7. So there's nothing that's not going to make 12. So I need to use quadratic formula. So when you're doing some other work, make sure you check first because you don't want to do quadratic formula when it was a really simple factoring question, right? Okay, so negative b, that's minus 12, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 12 squared, I don't need to put it in brackets because the b is positive, minus 4 times minus 3 times minus 7. Okay, so I have three negatives multiplied there, all over 2 times minus 3. Lots of negatives in this to send you for a little whirl. Okay, so 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 times 7 is 84, and 3 negatives make a negative, so it's minus 84, and 12 squared, 144. And now I have 2 times the minus 3 is minus 6, and that gives me minus 12, plus or minus the square root of 60, all over minus 6. Okay, now something you should be really careful of, make sure you don't divide this into this number. Okay, don't say, oh, that goes in two times because this is plus or minus. So you have to divide this minus 6 into both of these. So unless you have something really nice here that you can divide it out with, you can't divide minus 6 into the root of 60 very easily. So make sure that you're doing all of this first before you divide by that minus 6, okay? Because remember, if I asked you, um, let's say, minus 12 plus um, 24, let's say, over 6, and if you just divided the 6 into here, your answer would be 22, right? Minus 12 plus 24 divided by 6 would be equal to 12 divided by 6, which equals 2. So obviously, you can't do this, okay? You cannot. There's a plus sign here. But if I had done this, minus 12 plus 24 over 6, and I divided the 6 into the 12, and the 6 also into the 4, then I would get the right answer. So Basically, if there's a plus sign here, it has to go into both of those. This one is right, this one is right, and this one is very wrong. So I just want to make sure that you're not doing that when you're doing these kinds of questions. So um, what's the square root of 60? Uh, okay, so it gives me x is minus 12 plus 7.8 over minus 6. And that's going to be one solution. And the other one is going to be me subtracting 7.8 and dividing by minus 6. And those answers come out to approximately, don't forget little dot, 0 0.71 and approximately 3.29. Okay, so that's some work with um, the quadratic formula. The discriminant, understanding the discriminant, why you get these three different, that's kind of really key here that you understand this, that if the discriminant is equal to zero, then you have one solution. If the discriminant is greater than zero, you have two, and if it's less than zero, you don't have any solutions. Okay, so do some homework. I'm sure your teacher has assigned something for you on this lesson. And um, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.